people in the South think that rain is like bad weather? Hashtag happy holidays. I look like a bald right now because I have my hair pulled back. <laughs> um, sir? Sir? Is that for me? Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another day of Vlogmas. Today is Tuesday. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, December 24th. So it's Christmas Eve. We are going to uh, our annual Christmas Eve celebration on my mom's side of the family. So uh, my grandparents on that side and all my aunts and uncles and cousins and now we have all of my cousins have kids too, so there's quite a few of us. Right now, I'm actually gonna take Connor to get his haircut fixed. I um, I cut it last week, I think it was, and I tried to do a good job with the clippers, like doing it shorter on the sides and longer on the top, and I'm not that great at it. So, <laughs> I wanted to, so anyway, I'm gonna take him to Great Clips this morning and get that fixed, that won't take us very long, um, and then, Today I am making to take to the family Christmas. I'm making homemade macaroni and cheese, corn casserole, uh, ham and cheese sliders, and then I was gonna make mint chocolate chip brownies, but I have so many like cookies and candy and stuff from our Christmas baking that I don't think I'm gonna make those. I'm just gonna make up like a big cookie tray and bring that. So that is what we have going on today. Oh, there goes the Roomba. So. We don't have to be at that Christmas until 4 p.m. So I have a little bit of time to cook and finish wrapping gifts and everything that I need to get done. All right, so it's quarter after 10. I just We just got home a little while ago. I cleaned up the kitchen uh, because I cannot cook in a dirty kitchen. So I also wiped off my stove because I'm gonna be cooking, I think, well, maybe just one thing, the mac and cheese on the stove. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work on getting today's video edited and posted. It shouldn't take me um, all that long. And then I need to wrap some gifts and start cooking food for today. Okay, so I finished my video. I made this thumbnail. Sometimes I just make a thumbnail and I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. I love it. Um, so that has five minutes left. And then I'm sort of dividing out the rest of the baked goods that we made um, because the, we're gonna the give- Oreo balls are delicious. The Oreo balls are delicious, yeah. Them. Okay, no more. <laughs> um, so what we usually do, my sister and I, is give these to our family members. So I have these Christmas tins and I just, the metal ones, I just like to line them with saran wrap and I put mm -hmm. like a little assortment of all the different candies in there. And so I'll wrap that up and then we'll also give them a bag of the Crispix mix. So I have four of those packaged up and then I think I'll save the rest of this for uh, Adam's family Christmas tomorrow afternoon. And then I made up a cookie plate to take with me today for Christmas Eve. So I know I'm gonna get asked where this snowman platter is from and it's actually from Target in 2010. My mom got it for me so I highly doubt that you can get something like this anymore. Um, so I apologize for that but it's one of my favorites and I get it out every Christmas and either use it for um, like desserts like this or you can use it for veggies and dip or cheese balls or you know charcuterie board anything like that. It's very cute So I've got some of the sugar cookies in here uh, White chocolate pretzels some Oreo balls peanut butter balls and, and then some of the sponge candy And then I'll also be taking over some of the cherry cheesecake uh, Cookies so we can get some of those eaten up. We're going to our aunt's house. Yeah aunt who? My aunt Sue so it'd be your great aunt What's can you have a step? Can you have a step cousin? Uh, yeah, I think so. Barely. Barely? Okay. Um, sir? Sir? <laughs> Is that for me? No. Who's that for? I put it when Kira and Emma were playing. I put it under the door and they threw it back. That's <laughs> okay, Boomer. Do you even know what that means? It's about, I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Connor's going to help me uh, to finish wrapping the rest of the presents, I think. It's uh, 1217 right now, so I want to get downstairs probably by 1 o'clock and start cooking. So that means I have about 45 minutes to finish this stuff up. 
Connor has been such an awesome help wrapping. You've gotten good at wrapping. You're like an expert wrapper now. You said I'm an expert wrapper. Yeah. Like wrap a beat for us. I don't know. I'm just kidding. You've done a good job helping me wrap. I'm proud of you. So I got a lot of questions this year about was I doing a, um, like would you get your kids for Christmas video? And I really don't have my stuff together enough this year to do that. Because <laughs> as you can see, um, it's Christmas Eve and I'm still wrapping presents for my kids. But I did want to show you what I am getting them. Oh, there's a squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. What I am getting them in their stockings. So I have their stuff right here. And Adam's and Murphy's, although I think I already showed you that. Um, Adam actually doesn't feel good. He says his stomach is bothering him and so he's laying down. So he might have to skip Christmas Eve, I'm not sure, which is fine. I can still take the kids over. Um, and the kids are downstairs eating lunch and I locked the door and I said, don't come in here because I do have to finish wrapping a few more presents. So let me show you what I'm putting in their stockings this year. So I really don't have a budget for stockings, I guess. Um, I just try to buy, you know, like little items and then if you know, you're like me, you forget what you buy and then you buy too much, etc. So um, I have Kira's over here and Connor's over here and then I have Adam's right here. So Kira is 10, so I ended up getting her a little case for her um, AirPods. She actually wanted one of these and asked me for it, so I ordered one of these on Amazon. It was very cheap, like around $7. I also got her some of this candy cane green tea from Trader Joe's. She really likes peppermint tea. Um, for both kids, I got them one of these red velvet cake pops. I found those at Hy-Vee. Um, I got her just a package of stud earrings. These were inexpensive from Walmart. I got both the kids mini M&Ms and some bubble tape. And then I also got both the kids these hot chocolate snowmen that I got from Trader Joe's. They are um, milk chocolate and they have mini marshmallows on the inside. So you just dissolve it in hot milk and it makes hot chocolate. And then I also got her just some um, face wash wipes from Burt's Bees. Um, for Connor, I got him one of these Ninjago uh, spinner things. He really likes Legos. Um, the candy is the same as Kira's in the hot chocolate. And then I got him one of these Funko Pop Thor um, characters. I might have to take this out of the box for it to fit in his stocking. And then at Dollar Tree yesterday, I found these little transformers. Um, so there's a Bumblebee and a Megatron Grimlock and... Um, star scream so i think actually adam will probably get as much of a kick out of those as connor will and then for both the kids stockings um i am putting gold coins in the bottom of the foot i always do that and then uh i was going to wrap these up separately but i think i'll just put them in their stocking and some tissue paper um i got these in mexico for the kids and they're just little ceramic turtles and i wrote on the bottom cancun 2019 love mom and so i got one for connor and one for kira and I just thought it would be something neat for them to have um, forever to remember our vacation. So that's what I got the kids for their stockings this year. Okay, so for Adam, I got him some corn nuts. This is a new flavor. He really likes corn nuts. This is a chili picante flavor, and I haven't seen those before, so I grabbed those for him. Um, you guys saw this when I was in Charleston. I got these at some store downtown. They're um, dark chocolate Johnny Walker filled like truffles. I also got him some boar's head pepperoni, some uh, barbecue rub, some chipotle mustard, a little Kansas City Chiefs fake Lego, and a Smarty um, pop or lollipop, I guess you could call it. So that is what I got him. And I'll obviously wait till tonight to help Santa fill the stockings. So it is time to get started on the cooking for today. So the first thing that I'm gonna make is macaroni and cheese. This is a taste of home recipe that I have in an old cookbook. So I'll type the um, recipe out down below. It is the best homemade macaroni and cheese that I've ever found. So I have a large pot of salted water here that is boiling. And in here I have three and three quarters cups of, you can use macaroni, but I'm using the, I think it's called Celentani. Um, it's like the little sort of corkscrew macaroni. I'm going to boil this, I don't know, I'm going to start with eight minutes and see how it, you know, how firm it is. 
You don't want to overcook it, especially because we're going to bake this in the oven for like 45 minutes. And if you overcook the pasta to begin with, then it will just be like a soggy mess. So I just want to cook this until it's like just tender, like maybe not even super tender, like below al dente. The recipe that this um, comes out of is the Taste of Home contest winning annual recipes from 2006. Um, they used to publish these recipes every year and I used to order them by mail <laughs> every single year because I love Taste of Home so much. And here's the recipe. So what I'm working on is kind of putting the rest of the ingredients together. That way everything's done and I can just kind of assemble it. So what I'll do is once the pasta is done, I'll drain and rinse that. And then I'll use that same pot to cook the white sauce in and the cheese sauce. So here I just have my flour mixture. So there's flour, salt, sugar, white pepper, and mustard powder in here. And then I'll cook that with butter to thicken the sauce, add milk, and then it calls for cheddar cheese, Velveeta cheese, and then it also calls for cottage cheese and sour cream, so I need to measure that out. And yes, I realize that macaroni and cheese with two types of cheese, cottage cheese and sour cream in it sounds excessive, but really the only time, like literally the only time I make this, I look like I'm bald right now because I have my hair pulled back. Literally the only time I make this is on holidays. So either on Thanksgiving or Christmas or like maybe for like a special birthday party. So this isn't something that you're eating <laughs> or at least like us, we're not eating this like on a weekly basis, but it's so, so good. And if you don't like cottage cheese, don't worry. You can't, you can't even taste it in there. It like melts in with the sauce. It's so good. So I'm going to get that stuff measured out. And when the pasta is done, I'll show you how we make the cheese sauce. So my pasta is cooked and I went ahead and drained that in the sink with some cold water and that is just kind of resting there. So I'm melting my butter and if you haven't made mac and cheese like this before, you're basically making uh, a roux to make a white sauce or it's, I guess properly called a bechamel sauce. So essentially you're just cooking together butter and flour and seasonings um, until I I don't know, I usually just cook this for maybe about a minute. You don't need to brown it like you would like a southern roux or anything. Um, just cook it so the raw taste kind of comes out of the flour. Um, but like I said, the original recipe calls for flour, salt, and sugar. I do add white pepper and ground mustard powder to mine. But if you don't like those things, you can leave it out. Don't leave out the sugar. It makes the white sauce taste really good. I don't know why. I can't really explain it. It just kind of gives it, um, balances out the saltiness of the cheese and everything. So I'm gonna let this cook for maybe about 30 more seconds. And I have the rest of my ingredients here. So I have three cups of milk, some cottage cheese, sour cream, and then my cheddar and Velveeta. And if I didn't say this before, I am multiplying this recipe by one and a half. So if you make it and you're not doing it for a large gathering, just make the regular recipe. Feel free to, you know, multiply it by one and a half or two if you're cooking for a larger crowd. All right, so I'm setting my setting my camera up on the tripod here like a real YouTuber. I totally forgot that I was gonna use uh, whole milk and not 2% for this recipe because, you know, hashtag happy holidays. So I'm gonna add a little bit of heavy cream. You know, heavy cream plus 2% equals whole milk, right? I don't know, in my head it does. So I'm gonna add the Velveeta. This is after the milk has been added to the flour and butter and it's been had a chance to simmer for a little bit. So I'm gonna add the Velveeta, and then I'm gonna add probably about, I would say half the cheddar cheese, maybe about two thirds, because you wanna save some for the top of it. That way you have like a crispy kind of cheesy top, because we're gonna put cracker crumbs on the top also. I'm gonna get rid of the whisk. So once the cheese is melted through, and I just have this on like medium low heat, I'll go ahead and add the sour cream and the cottage cheese and then stir that in until everything is sort of combined and melted and then I'll add the pasta. So, I'm sorry, Connor's watching YouTube on the TV right now so that's probably what you hear. He likes watching FGTV, which FGTV has like 5 billion subscribers and they are not on YouTube kids and I don't know like what's gonna happen to these kid channels after January 1st? I don't know. 
like I haven't really thought about that because my videos are not for kids but like some of these I don't know I feel kind of bad for them because it's like they're they're not like offensive and appropriate videos they're just like videos for kids and I don't know if they're gonna get like demonetized or they're gonna have like reduced monetization or how any of that works I don't know I mean there's a lot of feelings about it I'm not really looking to get into a debate about it or anything but all right I'm gonna keep stirring this and then add uh, the rest of the ingredients. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so cheese is melting. I'm gonna add my cottage cheese and my sour cream. Listen, don't come for me in the comments if you don't like cottage cheese. I'm sorry. I also never said this dish was healthy, but you know, it's Christmas. But yeah, you cannot, I, I swear on my grandmother's grave that you cannot taste the cottage cheese in this at all. It just makes it really rich and creamy. I think this is actually about done. I am going to taste it just to make sure it doesn't need anything. Now I did salt the water for my macaroni. So take into account also that the macaroni is uh, a little bit salty in and of itself so you don't want to over salt the sauce. Plus there's a lot of cheese in here. I feel like it needs a little bit of pepper. Um, I told you I use white pepper, but I'm actually going to put some black pepper in it. And then I think I'm also going to put just, I'm going to put a tiny bit more sugar, a tiny, tiny bit, because um, like I said, the, the sugar helps to um, cut the richness of all that cheese. So let's try that and we'll taste it again. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's turn the heat off. I'll get my macaroni. The thing I want to say about this is when you mix it together, it's going to look like there's a lot of sauce. Like the ratio of sauce to noodles is going to look really high. But as this sits, the noodles will soak up the sauce and it will get um, less, more thick less loose. I don't know, however you want to say it. Okay, so my heat is off. I am going to get my casserole dish prepared and we'll pour it in there. I hope I have a big enough casserole dish. I just have a 9 by 13 so we'll see. All right, so I got my uh, 13 by 9 pan here that is uh, greased with cooking spray and we're going to pour some of this in and see Actually, I think it might all fit. Oh, look at that. Look at that. All right, so that looks perfect. Let's put the cheese on the top. Here's a tip here. If you grate your cheese yourself, put it on some wax paper. Uh, it's easy to clean up and it slides off the paper easily. Then you can just throw it away. Hawaii. Hawaii. Hawaii would be a good place to go, except you know how long of a flight that is from Iowa? Just as it stands now, it takes me five hours to get to the West Coast. Maui, what? Is Maui, is Maui um, the voice of the rock? Is Maui the birthplace of the rock? The voice of the rock. The... Oh, in uh, Moana? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so. The recipe actually calls for soft breadcrumbs mixed with butter, but I am substituting crushed up Ritz, Ritz, I can't even talk, crushed up Ritz crackers mixed with butter because this is much faster and it's just as crispy and delicious. So I just have one um, sleeve of Ritz crackers that I've mixed with some melted butter. I'm just making sure that's mixed around and then I'm gonna pour it on the top. I'm gonna spill some on the floor and Murphy's gonna eat it, so. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kinda spread this around a little bit. I do think I probably want to put this on a sheet tray before I put it in the oven, just in case it bubbles over and that doesn't make a mess in my oven. How long does it say to bake it? 30 minutes, okay. Well, let's get a baking tray. I had a comment on yesterday's video on the holiday baking video that they would have liked a voiceover instead. 
I agree with you. When I'm doing cooking videos, I would rather do a voiceover. However, I did say that for Vlogmas this year, since I was posting a video every single day, there's no way I would have time to film and then dub a voiceover over it and do that every day. So I do apologize for that. If I plan accordingly next year, if I plan accordingly next year, I may have time to do a voiceover for my <laughs> holiday baking video. So I do apologize for that. It was less uh, professional than I wanted it to be. But with um, uploading a video every single day, it's difficult to um, do those kind of things just because it takes more time in like post-production trying to get it together. And so here's another thing I wanted to say. So I've been watching, I've been watching Zachary Michael. If you guys don't know about his channel, he's hilarious. He's actually from Chicago, which is not that far from me. He does like react videos. Um, and mostly he reacts to a couple different YouTubers. One of them being Amber Lynn Reed. His videos are so funny. And he's not even mean to like, he's not even really mean to Amber Lynn, but like one of the videos she was talking about how she was so overwhelmed with Vlogmas. <laughs> and he's like, please, this is your job. I'm like, I know, like I, I actually commented on that video and I'm like, bitch, please. Like if you are saying that you are worn out by Vlogmas already on day one and this is your job, like girl, bye, bye. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, I feel so proud of myself that I've been able to keep up with it. And I've only missed one day. And even though I missed one day, I posted two videos the next day. And I've also posted two bonus videos. So I've vlogged every day, plus I posted a bonus weekend prep video and a cheese ball video. So I don't know. I'm, I'm proud of very, you know, uh, various things in my life. One of them being that I've been able to uh, stay the course with Vlogmas. Here's another question for you. So in the, in the Amberlynn Reed videos he, <laughs> that he reacts to, she's always talking about rain. Like, and I think she lives in Kentucky. Oh, it's raining, it's so gross outside. It's raining, it's gross, oh, it's gross. Like, do people in the South, because I've heard this from other YouTubers too that live in like Texas and Georgia. Do people in the South like, okay, thank you, go play. Do people in the South think that rain is like bad weather? I don't, like, ex like literally, I, I, I want people to explain this to me. I've heard so many people that I watch on YouTube that live in the South and they're like, oh, it's so gross outside today, it's raining. Why is rain gross? Like, it's rain, right? No, don't. Okay, that's enough. Go, go play. What? It's a cracker. Anyway, anyway, please explain that to me. People in the South act like if it's raining, it burns their skin and they can't go outside in it. Now, I'm making a generalization. Obviously, not everyone in the South thinks that. But I just think it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's a trend in different videos that I watch. Oh, it's so gross outside today, it's raining. I love rain, like, I would move to the Pacific Northwest in a heartbeat. I think, I think rain is awesome. It is life-giving, it makes the grass green. Okay, so I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I'm gonna wait about uh, 20 minutes, probably before I put this in the oven, I'm gonna make the corn casserole next. Next recipe we're making is a, not a fancy recipe, it's family tradition. I will uh, type the recipe out down below. I actually got this from one of my friend's mothers a long, long time ago. So this is sort of, well, we call it corn casserole. Oh my God, it's 2 p.m. Okay, shh. Um, so this is, corn, well, we call it corn casserole. Some people call it corn pudding, call it whatever you want, it's delicious. So I have in my large bowl here a stick of butter that's been melted. And I'm gonna add two eggs. Oh, that one's already open, whoops. Not gonna use him. Um, oh my God, all these eggs are broken. I guess I could still probably use them, but anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna crack two eggs in here, and what I like to do is, of course I got a freaking shell in there. Oh God. What I like to do is um, mix all of the wet ingredients together first, and then add the dry ingredients, good God. It's like I've never cooked before. <laughs> if this is the first video you're watching, you're probably like, oh, this lady's a hot mess. No, I'm not. I mean, yes, I am a hot mess sometimes, uh, but at the same time, it's Christmas, and I feel like every single mom in the world is like, not necessarily mom, woman, whoever, who is planning all of these Christmas festivities is unusually stressed out during this time of year. So here's my two eggs, one stick of butter melted, 
Then I'm going to add eight ounces of sour cream, which is half of this container. So I'm just gonna add half. I'm not gonna measure it because it's a brand new container. And then the recipe does call for diced onion. You could add that if you wanted. Um, typically, I don't mess with it. I just add onion powder, but you could definitely do what you want. There's a lot of kids that are gonna be eating this, so I'm pretty sure they're not huge fans of uh, chunks of onion <laughs> in their corn casserole. So I added about a teaspoon of granulated or, um, what's that called, dried onion? Yeah, onion powder, I guess you could say. Once again, I've never been in the kitchen before. This is my first day. Oh, also I'm gonna add a tablespoon of sugar, so let me get that. Okay, one tablespoon of sugar. That's optional, but I think it's good. And then pepper and salt. I don't find this adds, this needs a lot of salt, maybe just like a couple pinches. So there's my wet ingredients. And I'm also going to go ahead and add the creamed corn. So for this recipe, you'll need one can of creamed corn and one can of whole corn. So here's the creamed corn. I get this at um, Walmart. And the whole kernel corn, don't drain it, just dump it all in. And then I'm gonna whisk this up a little bit. And the last thing that we need is a package of Jiffy cornbread mix. And that is all, and that is it. So here's my Jiffy cornbread mix. This is like 49 cents at the grocery store. So I'm gonna sprinkle this over. Since this is the dry ingredients and I'm combining it with the wet, um, I just wanna make sure that I get everything kind of mixed evenly. And it will be quite uh, runny, I guess you could say, but this will bake up into almost like a, like a casserole consistency um, because of the flour and leavening and salt and uh, cornmeal in the mix so all right that's it I'm gonna grab my baking dish and we'll put it in there so this is the dish that I always use for the corn casserole it's a two quart like oval Pyrex dish I have no idea where to get it because I bought it at the Pyrex outlet like probably I don't know at least 15 years ago so I'm gonna spray it with cooking spray and then just pour the corn mixture in and that is it so this is gonna bake with the mac and cheese um, usually I'm trying to remember how long this bakes I feel like probably I don't know 45 minutes to an hour I think closer to an hour so I'm gonna get this stuff in the oven so I'm gonna go ahead and put the mac and cheese and or I'm sorry yes the mac and cheese and the corn casserole in the oven together um, I'll set the timer for 45 minutes and then I'll check it and see if it needs more time. The last thing that I'm going to make uh, for our family dinner today is some uh, Hawaiian roll sliders with ham and cheese. So I've made these before but I don't think I've ever really shared the recipe that I use. Um, I will link it down below and you, so the only thing different that I do with this recipe is that I don't put poppy seeds on it because I just don't really care for those but you'll need a package of Hawaiian rolls and um, it's easiest to use a serrated knife, like a really sharp one to cut these in half. So that's the first step. And then once that is complete and it's not like perfect, but it's good enough. I like to use disposable pans for this, especially when I'm taking it somewhere. It's just easier to transport. These are the disposable pans from Costco. So I'm gonna put the bottom um, of the rolls in there and then I'm gonna grab my ham and my cheese. And then I also have the ingredients to pour on the top. Uh, we don't really like a super sweet glaze on the top. I know some recipes will call for like brown sugar and stuff, but this one is all savory ingredients. All right, so I have um, some sliced ham from Walmart. This is honey ham and some Swiss cheese. So I'm going to get this on the rolls.
I'm gonna go ahead and put the tops on my uh, sandwiches here. And then I'm gonna make the butter sauce to go on top of the sliders. So in this uh, measuring cup, I have six tablespoons of butter melted. I'm going to add uh, one and a half teaspoons of minced onion. So I'm just using the dried minced onion. And actually, I feel like I need more because I'm almost out. I like to use this a lot, honestly, when I'm cooking, like especially for stuff that my kids eat, like taco meat and stuff. They don't like big chunks of onion in it. One tablespoon of parsley. I'm using the dried minced parsley. And then one teaspoon of Worcestershire. Am I saying that right? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Wor I used to say Worcestershire and everyone came for me in the comments. One teaspoon of that. Two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. So I just have this, um, this is from Walmart. It's a stone ground Dijon. And then whisk this up. Like I said, there are some recipes that are, you know, have like sweeter things in them. But since I'm already using the honey ham, and the Hawaiian rolls. I feel like if you put brown sugar in the glaze, it just gets too sweet. So then all you have to do is pour this over the top just as evenly as you can. Um, you can also brush it on if you wanted, but it helps if you obviously do this in a, you know, mix the butter up in a um, measuring cup that has a spout. All right, so. That is done. So I'm gonna cover this with foil, and I forget how long the actual recipe says to cook it, but it looks like there's about 20 minutes left on my corn. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it in there for 20 minutes, and then I'll check and see if it needs more time. All right, so all my food is done. Here is the corn casserole. That is uh, nicely browned on the top. I feel like if you push it and it's like firm, um, then it's done. Here is the mac and cheese that looks delicious I'm gonna go ahead and put a uh, lid on this and then I can heat things up in the oven once I get over to my aunt's house if I need to here are the ham and cheese sliders it does look like the butter burned on the bottom of the pan a little bit but I checked the underside and it turned out fine this is what I'm using to carry uh, the mac and cheese and the corn casserole it's actually a double decker casserole carrier um, this I got on Amazon and it's pretty sweet so I'll link it in the description box below but it has um, a section underneath which I'll put the mac and cheese in with the lid and then on the top I'll put the corn casserole and I like to wrap it in towels so that everything stays warm but the biggest news is that FedEx just delivered my home chef order and they delivered it to the correct house so thank you Lord for that but this week I only got two things. Um, I knew that we were going to be eating sort of a lot of junk food on Christmas Eve and Christmas and so I wanted to get some seafood. This is a Huli Huli salmon bowl which looks delicious. That's the only actual meal that I got and then for the other thing I just got a seafood sampler. So I actually like buying seafood from them. It comes like very cold and very fresh and as long as FedEx doesn't screw it up it works out great. So it came with two packs of salmon fillets, um, two packages of mahi-mahi. So there's three fillets of mahi-mahi in each package, and then um, two packages of tilapia. And I think total, all this is like around $60. Um, if you guys wanna try Home Chef, this is not sponsored or anything. I spend my own money um, buying it, but I'll leave my link in the description box below if you wanna get $30 off your first week. So I'm gonna get this put away and the food packed up, and we're gonna leave here pretty soon. Lord, thank you so much for this time together that we can be a family and have fun and food and celebrate the greatest gift of all, the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We just pray that you help us to keep him in our vision, Lord, and help us serve him and spread the kingdom and bless this time together and this food and <coughs> we're ready to get home safe and sound tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. <coughs> All right, so we're here at Aunt Sue's house. It's Christmas Eve. It's a tradition. I'm Aunt Sue. <laughs> yes, this is this is this is Aunt Sue. Do, do we want to turn this off? Exactly. Over there.
I'll never have a black stove again. <laughs> Like, no, they're a pain in the ass, yeah. Oh my gosh. Alright, so here, here's everything we have. I made some ham and cheese sliders. I showed you guys that. We have green bean casserole. Here's the corn casserole, the rolls. Did you get these from? Ryan's there? No, there is no Ryan's anymore. They're frozen oh. roads. Don't. Oh, Rhodes rolls. But I did make my I have own showed honey that. butter. Yeah. Butter okay, Rhodes rolls, which I've, I've showed you. I've showed you several Those times. We have ham. This is the mac and cheese that I made. It, I think it turned out delicious. I've, I've tried a bite. Um, turkey. Look at that garnish. Mm. So professional. I didn't even know you were filming, baby. And then there we have a crock pot of gravy. And what's in the gravy that makes it wonderful? Brandy. Yes, brandy in the gravy. Mashed potatoes. Cream cheese in the potatoes. Of course. Of course. Cream cheese and butter. Uh, stuffing or dressing, I guess. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah, dressing. So I've been told it's, it's dressing if it's not in the turkey. We don't care. <laughs> what's this? Wild rice? This is wild rice dressing? Camel's wild rice. Yeah. And then the spinach artichoke dip. This is Kristen's. Kristen, you brought the spinach artichoke dip? And then we got queso. No, this is buffalo chicken dip. Yeah. Uh, deviled eggs, veggie pizza, cheese and meat. Uh, what are these called? Pinwheels. Pickle pickle wraps. We don't know. Pickle rolls. Fruit. No one eats the fruit. No, we don't even have. Nobody's already gone through one whole plate. Uh, hummus and veggies and raspberry salad. With fresh raspberries. Yes. Gourmet. What did you get? So I have no idea what I captured tonight, but um, <laughs> it's now quarter to, no, it's quarter after eight and we are headed home. So I'll catch up with you when we get home from our family Christmas. Here's the See the presents underneath the little Christmas tree. And All right, so it is the following morning and we got home around 8.30 or 9 last night and um, went to bed. It does look like... Uh, Santa came and brought the kids some gifts and uh, filled their stockings. We look at some Christmas lights on the way home um, last night from Christmas Eve. And I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but Adam didn't end up going with us um, for Christmas Eve because he wasn't feeling good. He actually had a little bit of a fever and a stomach ache, but he seems to be feeling better this morning. So I hope that you enjoyed coming with us on our uh, Christmas Eve. It's always one of my favorite days of the year because it's one of the days when I get to see my whole family um, on my mom's side, my grandparents and everything. So uh, it was a lot of fun and the kids had fun playing 
and we had a lot of great food so thanks for coming along with us and you guys are seeing this on Christmas Day so I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and come back tomorrow and the rest of December I will be doing vlogmas through the end of the month um, I know some people are just doing it through Christmas but I will be doing it <coughs> excuse me, for the remainder of the month. So Merry Christmas and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.